Welcome back everybody. So I just got back from antelope hunting and Blackstone sent me this in the mail. The brand new large griddle cutting board. I'm loving it so far. A huge improvement over the original one and a set of Blackstone steak knives. So you know I had to stop at the market, pick up some ribeyes. Oh, it's time for ribeyes. I got to try out the new cutting board. Let's put that brand new Blackstone cutting board to the test. Let's get an onion ready. Love to have onions with my steak. And mushrooms. Picked up some baby bellas. I washed them out, dried them out on a paper towel. I'll set these aside for a few minutes while we work on our steak. Check out these gorgeous boneless ribeyes. Man, they look so good. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil on each one of those. Olive oil works great for this. Avocado oil, uh, duck fat. Uh, Nate and CJ use the beef fat sometimes, so you get the point here. It's gonna Coat these up with oil and we'll season those with salt and pepper. This is sea salt. Been loving this new sea salt that we got from the Redmond Salt Mine out in Utah. Ordered it online. Blackstone griddle on high heat. When you're cooking a steak, you want it to be super high heat. So whether you could get that griddle to 450 degrees, 550 degrees, 625 degrees, the hotter the better for that killer sear. Down with olive oil, again, that's my personal thing. Whether it's olive oil, avocado oil, whatever, I just always like to have that griddle uniformly or <laughs> oily in unison, something like that. <laughs> All of it looking oily like that. That's my dealio right there. Griddle top is super duper hot, so we're gonna go ahead and lay those ribeyes seasoning side down. And you are instantly gonna hear the sizzle, because we are going in for that sear, baby. Again, we want these things to be seared beautifully. So feel free to press them down if you want to. You can use a griddle press, whatever it takes. Slide my steaks over to the side. Olive oil. And straight down with the onions and mushrooms. I'll season with more of that salt and pepper. We'll also take this time to go ahead and season the second side of the steak as well. Another splash of olive oil. Got a skillet over here on my side burner. A little bit of butter. I'll start out with about three quarters of a stick. I can always go up if I have to. And I'm fresh out of garlic, but I do have a new tube of garlic paste. So, of course, we have to go in with some garlic as well. Tongs, perfect for flipping a steak. Oh, my goodness. If you want to, you can even take your steaks, press them up against the side of the griddle like this. It's a great way to get that killer sear. See that? Get that killer sear on all the sides. So, so much about Blackstone griddle cooking is interactive. You know, it's a lot like cooking uh, on a skillet on top of a range top. You're moving things around. It's not like baking where you throw it in the oven at 475 degrees and forget about it. So you're looking at things. Oh my goodness, well I can see that I can see that these onions and mushrooms need to be moved around. We're gonna move them around. You can look at them and think, hey, I think I need a little more salt and pepper in there. So grab a little bit of salt and pepper. Folks, cooking with the Blackstone is so interactive. As our garlic and butter are looking gorgeous here, learned this from Nate years ago, rosemary, it's just so good. A little bit of rosemary in there. We'll get that cooking away. Mushrooms and onions looking absolutely out of this world. It's time to do our first temperature reading on the steaks. I don't mess with thermometers very often, but with steaks, 
you probably want to do it. And another thing that we can do, if we're concerned, which I am, we're overcooking our steaks, we can grab the Blackstone uh, warming rack, any kind of a cookie sheet, something to raise it. Okay, we can put the steaks on top of here, and we can take a closer look at these. Uh, to make sure we're not overcooking them. Then we can bring them back to the griddle and back and forth if we have to. Yeah, 118, 122, 118. So yeah, we're pretty uniform right there. So we'll pull those steaks, get them back on the griddle, make sure they continue to cook so we can bring those things up another 10, 15 degrees or so. The oil and butter getting a little splishy splashy, so I need to break out a nice apron that my mother made for me a few years ago. And let's give the steaks one last flip. Right there, that's what you want. Right there. I, I've never made a steak that's looked any better than that. That is absolutely perfect in every way. We're gonna pull those for a second time. So I think we're ready to pull these steaks here. Let's uh, lay them out on my cutting board. And now it is onion and mushroom time. So I grabbed one of my little old school Blackstone uh, platters here. I'm gonna use that. Grab my skillet with the garlic, butter, and rosemary mixture. Lay this out here, make it look nice and pretty. And we'll put some of that beautiful garlic butter down on the steaks. You could also finish the steaks in the skillet as well. A little piece fell off the end there, so before we do a take a look at that, I'm gonna do a cheater's bite. Take a look at that. Grab one of those brand new Blackstone steak knives. Look at that, the package says Japanese steel. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. let's just grab one here. Oh my goodness. Let's give it a try. That steak is amazing. Killer sear, killer sear. Always pull your steaks early if you're not sure. That way you can do what I did. You can test them, put them back on, test them, put them back on. You don't run the risk of overcooking them. And I mean, I know these are gonna be amazing because you didn't know this, but off camera, I was snacking on the mushrooms and the onions the whole time. And let me tell you something about onions and mushrooms too, okay? I'm not a fan of mushrooms. I went well over 40 years without eating a mushroom ever. I sauteed one of the Blackstone griddle. It looked so incredible. Just the caramelization, the color, and I love them, okay? So when I'm making steaks and sometimes burgers, love to have the mushrooms. Same things with onions, okay? I've talked to a lot of people on tour, a lot of people, and my mother-in-law is actually one of them, who don't like onions. They're not a fan of onions, but they love them sauteed on the Blackstone griddle. So for what it's worth, I'm telling you what, you gotta get some of those. But I'm gonna go in for one last bite on camera. I mean, folks, look at that. That's the sear that I'm talking about right there, okay? You wanna have that killer sear, okay? You wanna have some pink in the middle. If you wanted to go to full medium, you could add on another five degrees or so, but Pull your steaks, they'll come up another five degrees or more after you pull them. Friends, there you have it. Delicious ribeye on the Blackstone. And of course, the whole inspiration for this was the brand new Blackstone large griddle cutting board and steak knives. I just had to do it. You can pick these up at blackstoneproducts.com. Speaking of blackstoneproducts.com, that's your portal for everything Blackstone. And hey, make sure you give me a thumbs up, please. Give me a comment, a like, and all that stuff down below. If you haven't subscribed, do subscribe. My show here airs every Saturday. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. And until next time, this is Todd. I'm saying praise the Lord and pass the ribeyes. I don't know what to call them. I think I have to have like some kind of a magical name, but I... 
I'm just going to let the picture do the talking today. The ribeyes. The ribeyes.